What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. So today I want to just provide you with a quick tip for helping you with the infamous gamma shift that a lot of Mac users tend to experience when exporting in DaVinci Resolve. So this is a very quick fix and it's something that didn't know about until about a week ago. So hopefully you can find some use from it as well. First things first, let's hop on into our project settings. So I have my color space set up to DaVinci Wire GB, my timeline color space set up to DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate, and then my output color space is set to Rec. 709 Gamma 2.2. So the difference between Gamma 2.2 and 2.4 is Gamma 2.2 is more so for web delivery, such as YouTube and social media whereas Gamma 2.4 is kind of the professional standard for things like feature films, streaming platforms like Netflix, that sort of stuff, and professional broadcasting. So I don't need that for this specific project because it is more for social media. So I'm choosing Gamma 2.2. So let's save our project settings and then just go into our color space transforms. So my first color space transform here, it's converting it from Sony S-Log3 to DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate. And then going over to my group post clip. So then we have our final color space transform over here. So that's converting it from DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate, which is what the working color space was for our timeline, into Rec. 709. And then our output gamma is going to be Rec. 709A. So the A just stands for Apple. Basically, they made a specific version of Rec. 709 that actually compensates for the gamma shift that occurs on Macs, which is awesome. I didn't know about this, like I said, till about a week ago. So great little feature. The only other thing you have to do is when you go to your export tab, you'll want to scroll down all the way down to your advanced settings here. So just expand that. And we wanna have our color space tag set to Rec. 709 and then our gamma tag set to Rec. 709A. So that'll ensure that you bypass that awful gamma shift that can occur when you're exporting on a Mac in DaVinci Resolve. So what I'll actually do as well is I'm just gonna link in the bio a free download to an ebook that will have a bunch of different settings for exporting in DaVinci Resolve. So this will be a nice little cheat sheet if you're looking to you know, export a feature film, you'll have settings for that. If you're looking to export more so like social media content, YouTube content, you'll have settings for that. And once you have the settings inputted into your export panel here, highly recommend just going up to these three dots here and just save it as a new preset. That way, you don't have to go in each time and manually configure it to the desired export settings. You'll just do a click of the button here, have it all there, just export and you're good to go. So hopefully you found this video informative and helpful, especially those who are struggling with that awful gamma shift issue when exporting in DaVinci Resolve on a Mac. But yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.